Well, here we go again. There's so much running through my mind right now, and uh, I'm trying to keep this in a nice, cohesive, logical progression, but I am furious. Pegida, Canada. Pegida, Canada. I'm, it's not a membership thing. I support them. I was at the rally in downtown Toronto on Saturday. We were vastly outnumbered. I'd say four or five to one by the uh, communists, out, and I'm out, avowed communists. The socialist flags, the Antifa. They were very well organized and funded. Sue Ann Levy from the Sun wrote a very good article about this rally. Um, the cops did a marvelous job keeping us apart, but I think it was pretty clear, as much as I admire the police that they were told to keep us, as my brother phrases it, kettled, to keep us confined and contained. We weren't allowed to march, and uh, there was no serious effort on the part of the authorities to clear a path for us to march. And they pretty well shut down our march. Uh, they made it clear that there'd be no serious support. It would have involved police confrontation with the Antifa, and what they were trying to do was avoid confrontation. So, are they caught between a rock and a hard place? Yeah, but I don't think there was much support for us on the part of the police. Now, there's a few things I'd like to address about this. Pegida, Canada, specifically. They are listed as an alt-right uh, white supremacist organization. Now, the people who say this obviously have never gone to the website and read their mission statement. They are not. They are not alt-right, right-wing, radical right-wing. They are not white supremacist. I am going to ask um, Jenny, the head, I'm going to ask her to get Pegida supporters, send in photographs and a brief bio, and especially if you're a visible minority. Like at our rally, we had uh, Asians, uh, Aboriginals, uh, people of color. These are the strangest bunch of white supremacists I have ever seen. Mayor John Tory, that hump. Now, I don't know if it's a libel thing. He never said, per se, that uh, Pegida was having a rally and encouraged people to come out against us. But what he did say, or what came out of his office, was that there was an alt-right white supremacist group having a rally in downtown Toronto. Well, what other so-called alt-right white supremacist group was having a rally other than Pegida Canada. So, <laughs> you know, you got a lovely little bit of sophistry there. Oh, circumlocution, I think, is the term. It was, a sh it was shameful the way we were treated. We weren't big numbers. I'd like to have seen a few more supporters, but we weren't big numbers. And definitely not allowed to get the message out. Uh, down shouted, uh, typical tactics of Antifa, noise making, down shouting. Uh, and some of the people who were there, uh, I'm ashamed. I used to be a union member, uh, which one is immaterial, but Opsu was there. Uh, two of them carrying Opsu flags. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you're just useless. You're another name for communist. I'll get into maybe one day about unions and my experience with unions, union management that I've had in my time. I don't talk about theory or um, beliefs so much. More empirical evidence, what I have seen, what I have witnessed, what I actually know, not what I've been told, what I've been taught, what I've seen, what I've read. These things factor in, certainly. But uh, when I'm talking about things, I'm talking about things that I actually know, that I've witnessed, that I am aware of. What makes me so angry about the casual dismissal of Pegida, and it's, it's actually extremely well done when you think about it, label you uh, alt-right and white supremacist and write off people shut off what you've got to say. 
well, they're, they're an alt-right uh, white supremacist group, so we're not going to even bother listening to them. Anybody with a brain who actually cuts through the bullshit and gets into the meat of what Pegida is about, I am behind them 110% as a good centrist, centrist Canadian. They have my wholehearted support. If I was rich, I would be funding them the way that obviously some of these uh, protest groups are funded. The, uh, the banners, the posters, there's money in there. That these, This is professionally printed out uh, uh, pamphlets that they hand out. There's money there. We don't have that. Pegida does not have that. She wanted to use to get her voice over, to be overheard over the, um, over the Antifa crowds. We applied for a permit, a noise exemption permit. Now, this is a Saturday, downtown Toronto, not a high traffic area, where she has a small amplifier and a microphone because she, she does not have a big voice, but to get heard over the little, you know, loud hailers. So we applied for a permit. And as soon as I found out whose riding it was, uh, the councillor's NDP, said, there's no way in hell. It's $100 non-refundable to apply for a permit. And of course, we were denied. And they say you can appeal the process. I think it's $250 or something to appeal the process. And I know damned well that if we had done the appeal, they'd have just taken the money, said, thank you. Nope. You know, and if you're as long as you're willing to give us money, we'll keep sucking money out of you, but you're not going to get anything for it. That, that is pretty much a given. Uh, this is the same counselor who says he sees nothing wrong with Muslim-only housing. Well, so much for fucking diversity in Toronto, eh? And tolerance and inclusion and inclusiveness. Oh, okay. Never mind. The hypocrisy is just mind-boggling, but they don't see that. The reason I'm doing this particular video, outside of the shameful treatment of Pegida, and you can watch the videos. You can see the numbers are read against us. And if you talk to, like, Mr. Bostwick, see his posts about us and what he was trying to say, he's... Uh, half Aboriginal, by the way, he is a status. Uh, he is a status Indian. On our side, so much again for the white supremacist label. And it got me thinking more about Islam and what Ms. Hill is trying to say about Islam, trying to get Canadians to open their eyes about Islam. And it's it it amazes me. The evidence is all there about Islam and the agenda of uh, Islam. The fact that a good Muslim, by the lights of them, by the lights of Islam, cannot coexist with any other religion. Now, this is according to the Quran. They cannot exist. There is no coexistence. It was like the communists. Communists did not see coexistence with Western democracies as possible. One had to conquer the other. That was their belief that eventually Stalin was very clear there could be no accommodation made with the Western democracies. Uh, when I was in the military, one of the things that uh, a lot of Canadian civilians were unaware, the uh, Soviet uh, uh, chief of the general staff had, uh, I forget his name at this point, had actually told his people they were willing to, he was willing to accept 90% 90% casualties in the Soviet Union if at any time they could guarantee a 100% successful first strike against the United States of America. Think of the cynicism of that. If we can guarantee that America is totally wiped out and incapable of a military response, to do that we will accept 90% casualties. And the reason for that was he figured the 10% remaining we can rebuild, but now we won't have to because they were the backbone of the democratic, the whole democratic process. And if he could wipe them out, then they could rebuild a communist, a truly communist or socialist planet. Everybody else would uh, have to fall into line just from their numbers. Think of that kind of a mindset. Well, it's not too far different from radical Islam. And what I've been watching, what's going on in Toronto, in Canada, and people seem to be unaware of how insidious this is. Now, ooh, you're Islamophobic. First off, and it's over and over again, they tell them phobia is an unreasoning fear. 
I'm not afraid of Islam at all. I'm worried about what they're going to do, how they want to change the political landscape of my country, as they have in Sweden, as they have in Germany, as they have in Belgium, as they have in England, as they have everywhere they've entrenched themselves. What people fail to see, and especially, God bless these soft socialist snowflakes and these, oh my God, stupidity just amazes me, educated idiots in many cases. They don't come in balls to the wall aggressively demanding this, demanding that. It's the death by a thousand cuts, if I may. And think about this. When you get the Muslims start coming in, um, could, you, could you perhaps um, accommodate us? Would, would you allow us to build a mosque here? For, for us to worship freely. Oh, okay, yeah, that's reasonable, sure. You can build a mosque. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're so nice. We so appreciate your kindness. Um, could you allow us to have a halal butcher uh, set up here in the plaza? Because you know, so our people can eat the foods that uh, we are religiously uh, uh, constrained to eat. Well, yeah, sure, that's reasonable. Yeah, let's do that. Each concession is followed with a request for more concessions. A little bit. Just Could you give us a little bit more? Or could you do this for us? Would you allow us? Would you allow us? To do, would you allow us to do this? Would you permit this? Oh, sure. Yeah, fine. Tolerant Canadians, right? Oh, yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, that's reasonable. And then the tone starts to change. They're not asking. We want you to take down the LBGTQ flag because it offends us. We want to have uh, prayer rooms in the schools because our religion demands this. We want to have this. We demand this. Now they've got the numbers. They've got sufficient uh, support from both uh, ignorant and stupid brainless Canadians, as well as they've got enough numbers of their own to start making demands. Now they're demanding this. They're demanding that. And the hostility starts. Now, I can't say this is a fact. I was told this. I trust the source, but I haven't been able to find any evidence to support this. Gravenhurst Anybody who knows Northern Ontario or near Northern Ontario knows it's a big tourist destination. And lovely beaches, great swimming. Summertime, that place is just a booming. Apparently, there was a request to the city council that they'd be allowed to build a mosque. Well, Northern Ontario is a little more conservative. They probably thought about it. City council said, no, we're not giving you permission to build a mosque. Someone apparently, started putting, uh, sewing broken glass and barbed wire in the beaches under the sand. So this was not just a broken bottle. This was laid out and buried. Now think of that. You go someplace to a beach with your wife and your kids. Your kids go running in to take a swim. All of a sudden they start screaming, coming out with their feet slashed or their legs slashed from barbed wire when they ran into the water, or broken glass buried in the sand. Who would have done that and why? Just think about that, okay? Have we had terrorism come to Canada? Yeah. Dan Force Shooter. They've tried to whitewash this, which just infuriates me. It was an act of fucking terrorism. It's whitewash it, spin it any way you want. It was an act of terrorism here in Canada. We have sexual assault in Canada by Muslim men, which, of course, by the Quran, there's nothing wrong with that because they're infidels and they're uh, impure women because they don't dress modestly. So they're asking for it. That's a fact. And the judge, that freaking snowflake who let that guy go in uh, the West Edmonton Mall in, in uh, Alberta, 
for molesting those young girls in the pool because it was cultural differences that led him to do this. And, you know, he shouldn't really go to jail for that. When did ignorance of the law become an excuse for uh, improper behavior? When I worked in Saudi Arabia, if I had uh, walked down the street during Ramadan chewing a sandwich, which I knew better than to do, I'd have gotten myself thrown into jail. And trust me, you don't want to be in a Middle Eastern jail uh, because they can do whatever the hell they want. They can beat the hell out of you. You have no rights. You can be tortured. You can be beaten. They can do whatever they want. And they're not accountable to anybody. Now, I would not offend the Muslims by eating during Ramadan in public. We had, for the foreign workers, there were, we had our own lunchroom. We would be out of sight of devout Muslims so we could have our lunch and stick to our meal schedules without offending the Muslims. Fine. It's your country. These are your rules, your laws. I'll respect them during, well, while I am here. I will respect your nation, your laws. I would never move to Saudi Arabia. Why would I want to? Or any Arabic country, quite honestly. Uh, uh, I would never want to live under Sharia law. And... Uh, a country like that. They're pushing, well, we just want elements of Sharia law being allowed into Canada. No, not one fucking more step backwards. No, here's the line. You're not crossing that. We will not allow Sharia law. But you've got asshole Canadians sort of thing. well, you know, maybe it's reasonable. It's not too excessive a demand. And can you not see this, this creeping progression of concession after concession. And there's another point, what they're doing. They're testing the will. They're testing the steel. They're testing the metal of the Canadian authorities. How much can we get away with? How far can we push them before we start getting a backlash? And as soon as there is a backlash, what happens? We're being persecuted. We're being, we're being discriminated against. The, the cries start, it got spin, that it's, it's because we're Muslim that we're being maltreated. I watched after that absolute atrocity of the Christchurch massacre. That is a calumny. It is an atrocity. It is totally unacceptable in any civilized country. I can, could not find stronger words to condemn that, like the mosque shooting in Quebec. There are some of the people saying there might be more to the story. Look, dead is dead, you know. Now, they have painted the, the Christchurch shooter as a uh, right-wing white supremacist, but from what I've read of his manifesto, I don't think you can actually put him into any camp. He is just a fucking fruitcake. Like, I would not call him uh, right, alt-right, centrist, or even leftist. He, he describes himself in so many different terms. The guy, the, guy was, the guy was a whack job, essentially. He was a fruitcake. He's just some nutbar with this incredible mishmash of, of ideologies. Uh, but he's already being painted as a white, sort of like a right-wing white supremacist. That's not from what I read, and I'm pretty good in English. I didn't get that from his manifesto. But it suits the narrative to spin this, is that this is what he was. Bullshit. But what bugged me, I was watching a, a girl in her hijab at, at Toronto City Hall uh, they'd shown up in support of the victims of the Christchurch massacre, and how what a dreadful thing it was, how terrible it was that they that people should be murdered in their own place of worship when all they've done is gone to worship God. And I could not agree with her more, but I agreed with her a hundred percent. But something occurred to me: are, are do you bleed and feel as deeply about all the Nigerian Christians being murdered by? Muslims. Do you feel as deeply and as tragic, do you feel the same sense of tragedy for those uh, two buses full of, uh, of uh, Christians on their way to a shrine in Egypt, uh, murdered by the Muslims? Do you feel as bad about the Ethiopian Christians being murdered by the Muslims? The 142 Kenyan Christians murdered by the Muslims. This was all within the last month, okay? Where's the media coverage? Where's the outrage? I have seen white Christians, many of them, speaking up in support of the Muslim community in the face of the Christchurch massacre. What have we heard from the Muslim community about the massacres by much greater numbers of Christians by Muslims? 
There are, and, and you can check it out if you wish to do your own research on Google. You don't see it in the mainstream media, but the numbers of Christians under attack in Muslim, by Muslims throughout the world today, and I mean now, is exceeds by many orders of magnitude exceeds the number of Muslims being persecuted by Christians. The hypocrisy is what bothers me. Massacre is massacre. Murder is murder. Sectarian strife is sectarian strife. If you have bloody hands, there is no way to spin it that you don't have bloody hands. And the Canadians are accepting this. The mainstream media is mostly complicit. It's partially that. Partially, why don't you just open your eyes and do your own research? This is the kind of thing Pegida is trying to get out to the Canadian people. We are facing now the same problems that Britain faced in the past. If we don't draw a line in the sand now, if we don't get a pragmatic, intelligent, political leadership at all levels of government, what is going on now in England? will be happening in Canada years down the road. 20, what, how many, 12 churches or something burned in France recently? Christian houses of worship. I wonder who's torching them. Never happened before the Muslims came. Is there a causal linkage? I don't think it takes great leaps of uh, deductive reasoning to figure out one has something to do with the other, right? Pegida Canada is trying, trying, to open the eyes, educate Canadians about the true nature of the threat to our way of life, to our society, to our values, to our people. I don't have kids. I got no skin in the game. But my young nephew, my niece, if it keeps going like this, <laughs> I would urge every Canadian, Canadian, good Canadian, join a gun club. Start learning how to use firearms, because by Christ, you're going to need them. This is running over the time I normally allot to this, but I am frustrated. The Antifa types, I, I don't know who's funding them. I just look at young stupidity and a perfect illustration of the problems in today's educational system. Some of them, some of them at a couple of these rallies have actually tried to engage and talk. But like at the ra last rally, uh, the young black girl, whoever she was, I don't know, made it quite clear. I tried to talk to her, to talk to her. She was willing to engage. She wasn't willing to engage me in a conversation. All she wanted to do was holler stupidity at me. And I was trying to talk to her. I could see from her eyes she was not intelligent. She wasn't a total moron, but she was just inculcated with the same bullshit. There was absolutely, she was not interested in listening to a fucking word. All she wanted to do was blast me with bullshit. And that's all she did. Well, you're a fine example of what universities are cranking out these days. Oh, people, 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 please, for the love of God, educate yourselves. Don't take my word for it. Don't. For God's sake, don't turn into a hater, but just be an aware person. Open your eyes. None so blind as they who will not see. And today, and especially today in my Canada, there is no room for cognitive dissonance. It's time to open your eyes and look around you objectively, reasonably. Take a stand. If you love this country, take a stand. If you love this country, throw your weight in support of people who love this country. Throw your weight in support of organizations who are trying to help and save Canada from sinking into that same quagmire that is going on in Europe. If you truly love this country, and if you truly call yourself a good Canadian, you will do this. If you want to join Antifa and the other snowflakes, you're just another left-wing asshole who has no concept of what history has taught us. Anyways, that's my little dissertation for the day. And in the words of Beretta, and that's to name it at tune. Have a good day.